the Denver Nuggets. And to this point, the Nuggets are the sixth seed in the Western Conference, I believe. They are 21 and 15. And listen, I mean, we know that this has not been their best regular season, but is there a chance that they surprise us in the playoffs like they have been the past couple of years? Because we know in, in 20 and 2019, I mean, two seasons ago, they were one of the top teams in the West. Everybody thought they were pretenders. Now they make a playoff run. Then last season, they, they were one of the top teams in the West again. Everybody thought they were pretenders. They made the Western Conference Finals. So this is a team that has been elevating every single year. So is, is this the year that they surprise everybody and take that really big step? Like how far do you see them going realistically? I don't know if I see them taking that big step and, and, you know, becoming something they haven't been in the past, but I do think they can still be the team they've been in the past where, you know, they go into the playoffs as a nice, well-rounded team, finish the regular season strong, and can upset some teams that they probably have no business beating in the playoffs. You look at the Clippers last year as a perfect example. I didn't think they had any shot to win that series, but they're a well-coached team, and they have a good core of guys to do it. You know, they struggled out of the gates this year. They've been dealing with some injuries to a couple guys that have missed some time, and it's messed with their rotations. Now, if they can get healthy, Jokic is playing at an MVP level. There's no question he's number two in the voting to me right now. Jamal Murray got off to a slow start. He's playing a bit better, and we know he always kicks it up come playoff time. Michael Porter Jr. is slowly developing, it looks like, over the course of the season, even though he's been a bit of a disappointment. So it seems like they're starting to find their footing, starting to get going, and the wins have started to rack up a little bit more than the start of the year. And come playoff time, they're another team, like I was saying with the Suns, a team I don't want to face. Jokic especially is such a tough matchup in the playoffs because he's kind of like that Anthony Davis-esque incredible matchup issue because he can play the five but also be an incredible playmaker so he causes you know those matchup issues it's what gave the Clippers fits because they couldn't guard him one-on-one they would send the doubles at him and he's such a good playmaker that he would always find the open guy and that was how they picked the the Clippers apart for three straight games and I just think they're a well-coached team they have really good personnel and it's the perfect storm for upsets come playoff time but I don't see them being a favorite when they when they face off against at least the Lakers, the Clippers, I would even say the Jazz. Yeah, I can agree with that. I, I think definitely to this point they wouldn't be considered the favorites. I love the I love the Denver Nuggets, you know. I love Nikola Jokic. I love Jamal Murray. I like Michael Porter Jr. I'm a Knicks fan. So when we drafted Kevin Knox over Michael Porter Jr., I was pretty damn disappointed. And Jamal Murray, listen. We talked about this before the year. I thought he was going to win most improved player this season. And because we've seen Jamal Murray for the past couple of years average around 18 to 19 points per game. And then in the playoffs, he just takes it to another level. Like he plays like a all-star superstar level player. So I thought coming to into this year, he was going to average 25 points per game. That's what I thought Jamal Murray was going to do. He hasn't taken that, he hasn't taken that step. But he has taken a bigger step. He's averaging 22 points per game this season. He finally hit, though, that big 2-0, the 20s. So he's averaging that. So credit to him. But Nikola Jokic, to me, is, even though we know how great he is, I think we still discount him because of how slow he appears to be. And we'll just be honest, he's not a high flyer. He's He's not one of those players. But he's still a very exciting player to watch and you look at what he's doing this season. He's fourth in points per game. I mean, the Nuggets are – look at Nikola Jokic this season. When we're talking about advanced analytics, nobody is close to him. He's first in PER. He's first in estimated wins added. He's first in value added by a lot. And value added, value added I don't know how that calculation works, but Nikola Jokic is at 405 for value added. Value added. Giannis is second with 311. So <laughs> it's not even close. And even though Nikola Jokic gets these points and gets these assists, you'd be surprised to know that he's only 15th in the league in usage percentage. So he's not even in the top five of usage percentage, and he's still giving out this great output. And the Nuggets right now, they're fourth in points per game, and they're seventh in opponent 
points per game. For the past couple of years, we've always been, you know, batting the drum on the Nuggets are a great offensive team, but their defense, you know, it's not that great. But this year it has been pretty damn good. And I think if the Nuggets get their fully healthy squad back, they can be a dangerous team and surprise a lot of people. Right now, Paul Millsap is missing time with a knee injury. Jamichael Green is missing time with a shoulder injury. And Gary Harris is missing time with a groin injury. All of these players have missed 10-plus games this season. And Gary Harris, we know in that Clippers series, he was huge for them. Paul Millsap brings a veteran presence. And Jamichael Green is one of the more underrated role players in the NBA because he can stretch out and hit threes. He is a very good stretch four. So I think... You know, this Nuggets team can shock a lot of people. I think if they face the Clippers, that's going to be a tough series. The Lakers, you know, last year, even though the Lakers beat them in five, that series could have easily went to six and seven if things kind of went a different way. And the Jazz, even though I love the Jazz this season, they're playing phenomenal. That playoff experience that the Denver Nuggets have, that resiliency, it's going to be a really tough out, and I wouldn't want to see the Denver Nuggets. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I, I keep talking about that last year's series against the Clippers. Talent-wise on paper, there's no way they should have beat that team. But Mike Malone does such a great job. Jamal Murray, it seems like every time he's in the playoffs, he just turns into a different player. And Jokic, he provides that same matchup issue that you get from a guy like Anthony Davis. I would even say Embiid creates that kind of matchup issue where you can't just throw a big on him because you can't play one-on-one against them. But if you throw a double, they have that playmaking ability and that shot-making ability that they'll make it hurt. So all of that being combined into one, like you said, also the defense is playing much better, which has been their Achilles heel over the past couple of years. If they can stay healthy, they'll definitely be a tough team to face in the playoffs. I think the Nuggets deserve a lot of credit for this one thing. They have a, an ability to draft really good players and then lose them. And it seems like they don't really miss a beat. You look at Malik Beasley. He's with Minnesota right now averaging 20 points per game. When Beasley was on Denver, I knew he was going to be that player. And that's why I was so upset when they traded Beasley because I thought Beasley was a really good player. Jeremy Grant this past season, they lost him. He's in Detroit averaging 24 points per game. If you even want to date back to an even earlier time, Evan Fournier, he was once a Denver Nugget. And he's in Orlando, and he's doing pretty good, you know. And regardless of that, the Denver Nuggets find ways to find these gems in the draft. You look at Zeke Naji, who looks like he has a lot of potential. He's starting to hit that outside shot. You look at R.J. Hampton, who is a raw prospect, but we all knew had we all know he has a lot of potential. The Nuggets tend to really hit in the draft, and because of that, I think they're going to they're going to you know be be good for a lot of years to come, for years to come, because they're going to hit on the draft. And I forgot to mention the biggest thing. They gave the Utah Jazz their core. Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert were drafted by the Denver Nuggets. You know, they gave them their core. So that, that's what I'm saying. Like, they're, they're, so, they're so great at drafting. Even Michael Porter Jr. was a risk, but there's a high upside for him. Bull, bull, the same thing. They tend to take the risk that other teams are afraid to take, and that's why I think they're in a good position. Yeah, and they the draft is so huge for them because although you know Denver is a fairly decent market compared to some other cities in the league, they're not a big free agent destination. In fact, you know you look at situations like Carmelo Anthony trying to get out of there, so it's not like they're going to go out and get big name free agents. But they've done such a good job hitting on the draft that they've been able to lose guys and recoup it seems like every single time you know they really haven't been a terrible team at all over the last decade I forgot a player Yusuf Nurkic yeah it's another great example yes Yes. like their track record drafting is pretty insane it is pretty insane just imagine a team of uh Jamal Murray Donovan Mitchell uh Michael Porter Jr., Malik Beasley Nikola Jokic Yusuf Nurkic Rudy Gobert Gobert off the bench yeah I mean they do an ex- exceptional job drafting. Like it, It's pretty insane how great they are at drafting. Yeah, and it goes to show why they're at where they're at right now. 